Welcome again, everyone. Let's talk about politics and governance. Let's look today at the uh, relationship between publicness and big tech companies. To talk about this topic, I have invited uh, Tobias Liebertrau to explore and uh, explain to us how big tech companies are increasingly playing a role in mediating disputes over societal problems, uh, delivering social goods, rearticulating public private relationships, etc. And so what Tobias will show uh, in our conversation is how big tech companies are playing this important role in public life and that we need as a society to develop new ways to understand, to regulate their activities, okay? So we'll be looking at how, um, how should we ensure that these companies are accountable to the public and that they do not abuse their power and how we can create uh, spaces where people can debate, discuss important issues, even when these issues are complex and technical. So let's jump into it. Tobias, welcome to our episode. Thank you, Rodrigo, and uh, thank you for inviting me. Sure. Tobias, uh, big tech companies, uh, as I said, are becoming more and more powerful in the world, and this is having a big impact on how we are governed uh, as a whole. So I assume this is why you found the topic relevant to be studied. Yes, that was definitely the, the major reason. And I mean, I think that there are perhaps three reasons for why uh, this is important. And the first actually is taking a step back, even from the big tech companies and saying publics outside the state or global international publics, what does that even entail? What does it mean? And I think to me, that's important because publics, they are fundamental uh, in terms of of democracy in terms of authority, in terms of responsibility and legitimacy. So it, sort of the concept in itself is, is at the foundation uh, of, of society and the way we have organized our societies. Um, so second, as you said, there's also something to the big tech and the nexus between publicness and big tech companies. And, and that is increasingly important because big tech companies do, as you said, mediate disputes over societal problems. They increasingly deliver societal goods. One is security, as we examine it in, in, in this particular piece, and they rearticulate public-private relations. Um, mm -hmm. And thirdly, uh, as I said, in the context of our specific study, it's a study on Microsoft and cybersecurity. So identifying relevant publics in this case is pivotal to delineate both authority, legitimacy, and responsibility in relation to security. So it spurs us to engage with questions of who is responsible for what and to whom when it comes to security politics. Mm -hmm. Sure. And you mentioned, let's follow up on this. So you mentioned in your in your article with your co-author, Linda Monsis, uh, you write that um, you are drawing on but also extending insights from uh, this literature to examine, as you said, the nexus between publics and private companies in international politics. What can you tell us about previous research and how does yours fit here? Well, I would say that in general, uh, the research on publics has been tied to the nation state, first of all, uh, perhaps naturally, and then to international organizations as a way to sort of expand the, the field of research. And we wanted to add private companies as sort of a third angle to the study of the public uh, and to explore what role private companies play in, in creating publicness. And in doing so, I think we, we draw on and, and speak to research in international politics on the role of private companies. And they, they, their role has been studied uh, in terms of uh, global governance more broadly, in terms of security, uh, and of course also in terms of corporate power of big tech so the article also speaks to work that has been done in, in related fields where we have seen concepts such as surveillance capitalism uh, data capitalism internet industry complex to sort of conceptualize and specify the role of, of big tech and i see our piece uh, as building on that but but advancing then the particular literature on, on publics mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you have well, you fed us some curiosity, so let us know about the key findings and conclusions of your article. Well, I think one of the, the major findings is actually that we need to conceptualize, and we need new ways to think about the political and democratic role of the public because of this new role of big tech companies, because big tech companies deliver societal goods to an extent that we have rarely seen private companies do, uh, and they in many ways are the drivers of also mm -hmm. articulating what are public problems. Um, and a related 
problem is that big tech companies and their practices do not necessarily align with our traditional idea of thinking national politics, democracy, security. So this forces us to pay more attention to the diverse role in which publics um, are enacted and, and the way they, they matter today. Um, and again, in, in our case, we demonstrate how Microsoft problematized and counter uh, malevolent state-led cyber activities. Uh, Microsoft is questioning the state as a protector of the citizen and proposing new governance measures. Uh, so in general, sort of saying, well, we have this idea as the guarantor of, of security, um, but perhaps it's increasingly becoming the private sector. So there's a rearticulation of public-private relations, and we thereby see the emergence of a new subject for whom security is not solely the right of the citizen secured by the state, but also a customer service provided uh, by a service agreement by a private company. Uh, and from a democratic perspective, this can be problematic since the erosion of the role of the state as the provider of security somehow clashes with the right of the citizen to claim protection against outside threats. So this is not sort of an, an easy puzzle to be solved. There is something paradoxical in, in big tech companies, in our case, Microsoft, doing something to enhance the security of at least their customers and being the first responders, being actually the ones that counter uh, malevolent state and cyber activities. But on the other hand, this might undermine some of our democratic uh, rights that, that comes with being a citizen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you mentioned um, empowering the different publics. Uh, this activity of Microsoft makes me wonder about potential policy implications. What can you tell us about that? Well, I think that there are quite a few policy uh, implications in terms of how we structure this public-private relationship, in terms of the degree to which we need more public regulation, Mm -hmm. or the extent to which we can build some kind of partnerships that functions mainly through the government or the state facilitating uh, collaboration, uh, through priming self-regulation in, in the private sector. Um, so that's sort of on the broader policy side. Mm -hmm. uh, on a more day-to-day -day basis, I think that the study can sort of translate into our reliance on big tech uh, and, and how they act with authority, legitimacy, and responsibility or not vis-a-vis -vis our individual lives uh, and sort of the impact they have on our, on our everyday lives, being it uh, when we are on our phones or using software or, or whatever, that we are increasingly dependent uh, on big tech companies. Um, and they thereby, they do govern somehow to some extent, but perhaps without uh, enough sort of uh, mm -hmm. oversight and regulation. Mm -hmm. Of course, you have. So we have looking at uh, the so the core of the research, the the what, the so what, so what um, like the the value, the contribution of your research. Let's look at the now what. So can you indicate the researchers out there what comes next? Maybe analyzing uh, more companies, which is this third agent after national states and international organizations. So what what's what now ahead of us? Well, I think that that sort of the study can be uh, sort of expanded uh, empirically by by looking at other ways big tech uh, rearticulate public private relations and provide other forms of societal goods than than security because security is particular uh, because that is the raison d'etre of the state. Uh, I mean that is sort of the the foundation or the core uh, of the way we have structured uh, society and and the state. Um, but I also think that a valuable case to explore this further that would align more with our study and to keep the security angle would be the war in Ukraine and to study the role of big tech there and see how mm -hmm. they have played a role in, in supporting Ukraine. I mean, they have been key players. Uh, Microsoft, Amazon have migrated the cloud in Ukraine, the public cloud, uh, and, and they did that without being told to do so. I mean, they did it uh, sort of out of free will and, 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 and out of virtue. Uh, and we have seen also uh, Starlink playing uh, a role in providing internet, but also in Elon Musk sometimes threatening, uh, taking it away, uh, and Palantir providing some kind of data analysis. Uh, so we see uh, a bunch of these companies playing a pivotal role uh, in the war in Ukraine. And of course, that might be a very good thing, and we might be happy that they support the country that we, at least in the West, also support. Mm -hmm. But again, it also comes with some implications uh, and 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 some caveats in terms of 
the future and in terms of democracy and, and can we always bet on these companies sort of doing what we in the West uh, think is the best and, and acting morally, ethically uh, in the way that uh, we might uh, benefit from and that we find is the right one. Of course, yeah. Is there, uh, to complement this that you said, are there any materials that you'd like to share with us to explore this relation between publicness and big tech companies? Well, I think that, that one place to start is, of course, to take a look at the special issue that, that mm -hmm. this article is a part of, to, to explore sort of broader how publics shape uh, international and global politics and, and are shaped by it. Um, and then I would say that I don't want to point to one specific publication, but I, I want to sort of recommend listeners to orient themselves broadly when it comes to the role of uh, big tech companies. Um, because I think that political science and international relations offer many great and quite diverse perspectives. Mm -hmm. But I think we also need to look into uh, media studies, communication studies, science and technology studies to sort of get an overview or actually phantom what, like how broad a role uh, these companies play and what sort of role they play and how they do it um, mm -hmm. to actually get to uh, their actual power and, and how we might in the future sort of rein that in in a better way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A recommendation of more than uh, specific materials. Yes. Bias. Um, let's wrap this episode up. You've been very straight to the point, but I would like to close this episode with a punchline. So if there is anything you want our audience to remember about this talk, what would it be? Well, that would be that the increasing impact of big tech companies to mediate disputes over societal problems, deliver societal goods, and re-articulate public-private relations really forces us to revisit and re-problematize both the practices of big tech, but also the vocabulary that we deploy to grasp what big tech is doing. Mm -hmm. Straight to the point. Tobias, it was a pleasure. Thank you. To our uh, viewers and listeners, if you are on YouTube, you can find all the resources, all the materials of this conversation, not only the article that this uh, conversation was based on, but also the thematic issue uh, that uh, Tobias mentioned. You can find everything on the Let's Talk About Politics and Governance website. And you can also listen to this episode, alternatively, wherever you get your podcasts. There's also a newsletter you can subscribe and follow us on Twitter at Cogitatio LTA.